In this tutorial, we will explain computer-aided design through using the program SketchUp. Periodically, we will stop to lead group discussions and ask questions, and also explain the additional resources available on our Google Classroom. What is CAD? Computer-aided design is the use of computer software to generate and modify a part or compilation of parts. Traditionally, CAD programs are used in engineering fields but have since been expanded to be used in many other STEAM fields. Out of the many things CAD programs can be used for, many everyday objects are designed and created using CAD programs. Things such as vehicle concepts, jewelry, orthodontic devices, furniture, and home remodeling are all done by using CAD programs. SketchUp, the CAD program we will be explaining in this tutorial, will be explained with the end goal of 3D printing an object. Basically, from design to print, 3D printing an object is as simple as 1, 2, 3. Step 1, a 3D model is created using a CAD program, such as SketchUp. There are many more advanced and intricate CAD programs out there, but we'll be using SketchUp. The second step is to create a G-code file that will be later transferred to the 3D printer. This G-code file is saved usually via a SD card or a USB drive. And the final step is printing the 3D model with the 3D printer. There are many settings on various 3D printers as well as different media available to use for printing, but this is the final step. So you may be wondering, well, I'm not a STEAM teacher, so why even learn about CAD programs or 3D printing? Well, there are many reasons to integrate problem-based learning, CAD programs, and 3D printing into other non-STEAM content areas. We'll go over those reasons in the coming slides. Out of the many reasons to learn how to use a CAD program, one of the main reasons is the job market. Currently, there are many of the top high-demand jobs that require CAD knowledge. Some of these top in-demand jobs are on your screen. They all involve some degree of engineering, they all have very good salaries, and high projected growth. Beyond the obvious benefits of learning CAD programs and learning STEAM skills in general, some problem-solving skills can be gained by using these programs. For example, collaborative problem-based learning has been shown to benefit student learning and engagement in the STEAM disciplines. Also, choice-based projects allow students to pursue their interests, organize their own learning, and as a result, cultivate STEAM interests in learning. Finally, problem-based learning encourages higher-order thinking skills and promotes real-world application. 3D printing has been in the news a lot in recent years. On your screen are some of the headlines of media coverage on the industry just in the months of May and June. As you can see, many large corporations and government institutions are investing many millions of dollars into these technologies. Also, there is a very bright future for 3D printing due to its many applications. So how can you use 3D printing in your class? Here are some cross-curricular ideas to use the concepts learned in this tutorial in other content areas. In, in, in a geography class, you could make a topographical map of an area. In an architecture class, you could apply these concepts for city landmarks. In a chemistry class, you might make a model of, of a molecule or an atom. In culinary classes, you might make some molds. And finally, in a biology class, you might make some replicas of human body parts. So now that you've discussed 3D printing and CAD with your department, let's talk about SketchUp. SketchUp is a computer-aided design software that was originally developed by Google. It is often used by schools to create designs for 3D printing. They have a free web-based version as well as a paid software that can be downloaded. To get started, go to SketchUp.com. Click on Products, and under Personal, you will see SketchUp Free. Click to start modeling. Log in with your Google account, 
If you have a school Google account for G Suite for Education, log in with that. So in this video, we're going to use SketchUp Free online to draw a house. So go to Google and search for SketchUp Free. Click the link for it, and then you're going to get to the web page, and you're going to click Start Modeling. Then you're going to need to sign in with your Google account. Mine's already there, so I'm just going to choose my Google account and log in. And then it's going to load, and it might take a bit before it loads fully. All right, so now you got an option to take the tour or just click Start Modeling. If you click the tour, it's going to show you uh, what all the icons and tools are in SketchUp. So you may want to go through it. I don't use these panels on the right a whole lot. Uh, I don't use the status bar except for the undo and then in the lower right hand eventually you're gonna wanna really use the measurements a lot and you click yep you're ready to get started and you need to agree to the terms of service now we're ready to begin you're gonna see that it starts off with an XYZ 3D coordinate system so you got three axes and there's a man on the screen. I don't really want him, so you can click on him while you're using the arrow tool, or you could use the erase button and erase him. Uh, I think it's easier to click on stuff with your mouse with the pointer and then just press the delete button. So let's look at what the most important tools are. We got the erase button, paint bucket will allow you to paint things different colors, uh, not a big deal. Pencil a lot will allow you to draw lines. This one's for arcs. This one's for circles. And if you click on it, you got a bunch of different shapes you can draw. So you can probably use the rectangle uh, shape the most. Then we have the push-up tool. This one's going to be used to make things 3D. Uh, this one I'm not going to use very much. This one's the move tool for moving things on the screen. Tape measure will allow, you to, will allow you to measure. And then the bottom one is for controlling how you view things in the screen. Now let's get some hands-on practice designing a house in SketchUp. While we build the house, we will continue discussing the software. Try it on your own computer. So let's start off by drawing a rectangle. So find the rectangle tool and then click and move your mouse and then click again. Don't drag. Now we're going to use the push-up tool. We're going to use this tool a lot. Click on the push-up tool, click on the face and, dr and drag it up. And then click again and then it'll make that shape 3D. It'll be a rectangular prism now. Now if you move this pencil around to draw a new rectangle, let's say I want to make the steps, you can draw on the faces of things or you can draw on the coordinate system. So I'm going to click there to draw some steps, click the pull up tool to drag it up. I want another step, so I drag and draw another rectangle, make sure I click and then use the pull up tool to pull up that next step and then click. Now if I want to make a door, I can click the rectangle tool. This time I'm going to draw right on the face of that rectangular prism. And then I'm going to click. And then to make it look like it's a door, I'm going to push it in just a tiny bit. Alright, so let's put some windows. I'm going to go back to my rectangle drawing tool and I'm going to draw some rectangles right on the front face of this rectangular prism. Instead of pushing, I'm going to use my arrow tool, click on them, and then press the delete or backspace button to make windows. Now if you're using a trackpad and you want to move around and check out the house from different angles, you're going to want to go down to the bottom tool that looks like some arrows going around an axis. Click on that, and there's different tools here for you to check out. So this one's for rotating. You click and move and drag and it'll let you rotate and see different sides of the house. The hand will let you slide or pan the picture around. Magnifying glass will allow you to click and drag and zoom in or zoom out. If you don't want to use your trackpad you can use a three button mouse. There's a button on the left, 
the right, and then the scrolling wheel is a button also in the middle. You can scroll that, but you can also but you can also click it and move the mouse around as well as the third button. So here you can see if I'm scrolling, just moving and rotating that scroll wheel around, it's going to make the uh, picture go in and out. If I click and drag, it's going to rotate around. So you may find that using a mouse is easier than using a trackpad. Alright, so let's add some more stuff to the house. Let's decorate it and make it look nice. I'm going to add some windows on the other side of the house. So I'm going to get my rectangle tool, draw some rectangles, and then I'm going to use my arrow pointer tool to click on them and then press delete to delete them so that we can see inside the house like a normal window. Now I'm going to put a doorknob. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to draw a circle this time where my doorknob should be. And I'm going to pull that out so it looks kind of like a doorknob. Now I think I need to add a roof. So I'm going to zoom out, rotate it so I get a good view of the side of the house so I can get a good look at the roof. So this time I'm going to use the pencil tool. And you're going to have to watch real carefully because this is kind of tricky. So I'm going to follow the edge and you can see that if I put the pencil right on the edge, it's a red square. But then as soon as I get to the middle, it's got a blue dot and it says midpoint. I'm going to click when it's a midpoint. I'm going to come across to the other side, the other edge, and I'm going to move it till it finds the midpoint, and I'm going to click. After that, I'm going to find the Move tool. And I'm going to highlight, I'm going to move the Move tool over it so it's blue, then I'm going to click and drag it up. And then I can move the roof to where I want it to be. Click. So now I have a nice roof, typical of a house. You can rotate and see what this looks like from different sides. Finally, I'm going to add a chimney. So I'm going to get another rectangle. I'm going to draw on the plane, not on the house, a rectangle. And I'm going to pull it up to make my chimney. Now I need to rotate. I want to see the top of it and put down some circles so that it can be a real chimney. So I'm going to zoom in, draw a circle. Then to make it real, I'm going to use my push pull tool and pull down the circle so it looks like that's where the smoke could come out of the chimney. And there's my house. To save your work, you're going to go into the upper left hand corner of the screen, click on Untitled, probably should have been doing this all along so you don't lose your work, give it a name, and once it's loaded choose a folder, so there's a SketchUp folder, I click on that and then I'm going to say save my house picture that I've done inside that folder. So now that you've learned how to make a basic house in the SketchUp program, here's a review of some key functions. The erasing tool removes lines, triangles, and vertices by individual selection. The insert shape tool creates or draws shapes. The push and pull tool pushes and pulls the face of an object. Some other key functions are the select tool, which is used to select an object the pencil and move tool which draws lines and the perspective tool which changes the view or perspective on your screen. If you would like to check it out and use it there's a quick reference card available on our Google Classroom. On this reference card you will find the common icons and some tips for using SketchUp. 
Because no technology is perfect, there are some considerations to take into account when using SketchUp. In terms of some of its strengths, it is a, one of the better free software options. It provides Google authentication for ease of use by Google schools. In other words, the schools that already have G Suite for Education will have no problems logging into and using SketchUp. It also has a user-friendly interface with simplified basic tools. Active developers who push updates and offer heavy support to users are constantly using SketchUp. It also has a good potential for uh, plugins, allowing for enhanced features, many of which do cost money though. And it does have infinite possibilities for students. Especially for those who are STEAM inclined, there are many, many options uh, to use this program. Some of the potential drawbacks or struggles when using this program are that more elementary software that has limitations for advanced users, meaning this may just be too basic a program for more advanced users. And then there are some plugins that allow for better features, but they can be costly. SketchUp is a freemium program, which means the base software is free. However, more advanced options and features do cost money. For additional tutorials and help using SketchUp, please visit the SketchUp website on your screen. Additionally, the individuals responsible for creating this tutorial can be reached using the email addresses on your screen. Before you go, don't forget that this presentation as well as other materials and our discussion boards can all be found in our Google Classroom. Check out the join code on the bottom of the screen.